ותרנו תודי. ולב היא אז מריאד, אי כאן ושם מפאפי. I believe literally that the song sings the singer. For me, you should, it's you, all ego. And submerge yourself in the song, let the song sing you in that sense, you know. No one can own the earth, you can't own the songs either, but if it's for some little period of your life, you and the songs possess each other. One starry night As I lay asleep in One starry night I lay in my bed I dreamt I heard Wagon wheels are creaking And when I awoke My own love had fled I'll search the highways I'll search the byways I'll search the boring And camping places too I will inquire All from our people Have they tied or tied in For signs of you When you start traditional singing uh, First piece of advice you get is to start at home, you know, dig the ground beneath your feet, if you like. Um, and for me as a Dubliner, there was always the Luke Kellys and the Ronnie Drews, you know, the rabble rousers, the foot stompers, the sort of vaudeville charm of it all. But Liam Weldon, I, I guess he just brought something different, something a bit more contemplative, uh, a bit more soulful and a bit more poetic, I think. But now I found love you were only lent I'm drunk today, love But of times I am sober A constant rover from town But when I am dead low And my trouble's over Molly born a story Won't you lay me down Hello? How are you, Nellie? It's Dara here. Uh, how are you, Dara? I told you, I was saying to you yesterday I was going to ring you up and... Uh, Maybe ask you a few questions about Liam. Would that be all right? Yeah. You're not sick of talking about him at this stage, no? No, no, never. <laughs> he was a very, very good you, my man, you know. He used to go up and lock himself in the back bedroom and sing. And before you go up, he'd say to me, look, Nelly, if the Pope knocks at the door, I'm not in. Young Cooney and Collie and Hell Martin Quinn Sure they met up together to smuggle the tin With me right sword and earning 
Right sword and earn and right sword and name. Well, we walked all the day, boy, till our heels they grew raw. And we hadn't the comfort of lying in the straw. Oh, with me right sword and earning, right sword and earning, right sword and name. Well, the hills they are high, boy, and the mare she is thin. And me heart lies a trembling for fear she'll give in. With me right sword and earning, right sword and earning, right sword and name. Well, I'll yoker, says Colly, I'm wide to her tricks. Uh, but the more that he yoked her, the more the mare kicks. With me right sword and earning, right sword and earning, right sword and name. Well, I once had a Bible all covered in dots. And as many's the fiver, she's one in the trots. With me right sword. Right sword and earning, right sword and name. What strikes me is, ultimately, Liam was still quite a, an obscure, unknown figure. For someone of his quality, both as a singer and as a songwriter and poet, he's not exactly a household name. He, he didn't enjoy the commercial success that a lot of his peers did. Some of those guys went on to... In Carnegie Hall and, you know, big concert hall stages around the world. Liam ran a folk club in the Taylor's Hall in, in Dublin, you know. I don't think he was ever clamouring for success or, or for fame or, or anything like that, but he seems to me to be someone massively under-celebrated, an unsung hero of the Irish ball tradition. make the excuse If you leave us all go, sir, it's home We will scoot with me right so Right sword and earn, right sword and name. Fame is only a bubble. You know, you know, just superficially sort of have the commercial success and all the rest of it or whatever. That's if you're following or chasing commercial success, but the songs for me are the thing. We cross back the border, we blessed our own fates At a hell within the black north, we're in the free state With me right sword and earning, right sword and earning, right sword and name If you look at the, the Irish canon in comparison to say the Scottish or broader British traditions We're known for a gentler, more lyrical art form and for someone like me, uh, with a big boom voice, I, I began to wonder if there was room for someone like me. Uh, but that changed entirely when I, when I heard Liam Weldon. I always had a powerful voice. I learned, and I learned to sing basically from the street singers, singers, you know, people who sang out in the open and wide, just for pennies in the street, you know. Up was like Paddy Riley, you know, for instance, it wasn't his name, but it was the only bloody song you knew, you know, Paddy Riley and Bally James stuff. And these times, this would be the 40s, you know, very depressed times in Dublin. They'd be lucky if you got a few pennies, you know. But the old ladies look, looking out of the windows and at the top of the telemans, saying, Go on, Paddy, there's an old penny for you, you know. And they've gone along the gutter picking them up. God bless you, mum, you know. I've only got my voice back in for a world of chance me, so. Although I don't know what wind you'd sing up to. All these red bigs around with their liberties now, so I think it's full of the yuppies. I couldn't imagine them getting away from their studios to throw money to a street singer, you know? Unless it became the end thing. And Bono or some of these fellas were doing it. I am a true born Irish man.
hat traveler am I my home's the road no fixed abode I must travel till I die for years I've known travelling people and uh, I've always felt sympathy with them because I was born and reared in the slums of Dublin in poverty in itself. I think it's a bad word, it's, it's, it's a filthy word to the travellers is because it has become a term of abuse, you know. The travelling people are just travellers, they're just poor people who have no homes. This is the thing about it, like, you know. But people, because they, they feel that they're aliens, and that, you know, they don't know, the, it's like all prejudice, of course, it's based on that they don't know. This is the thing. Hunger, hardship and poverty are the traveller's weary load. Hunger, hardship and poverty and the I think anyone who knows anything about Irish folk songs will understand the indelible mark that the travelling community left on our native song tradition. But while that's a well-established fact now, I don't know that if in Liam's day it was really that commonplace for a settled person to champion travellers the way he did. From what I understand, Liam grew up in his grandmother's house in Hanbury Lane and she would open the back garden for travellers to come and camp there. But I'd be out in the yard, and as soon as I heard a song, I'd stop whatever I was doing and listen, you know. And not making it too obvious, you know, because some of them would stop if they seen you, you know, deliberately listening to them, you know. But I, I just kind of mooch around and listen to what was going on. I got most of my songs, uh, and most of my inspiration for songs from the travellers. And sad to say, I go I seldom see a smile When the travelling people around Valley Fair and particularly where I was living and I'm living now at the moment that's when I'm waiting for my yacht to read a bit of her they were getting harried and harassed like from the the establishment of all descriptions they were getting shoved from one party to the other and at the same time I made this other one called the uh, Blue Town Road, which I felt was the, you know, it, it gave a, a description anyway of what was happening like to the people, you know. And the Blue Town Road. Like everywhere else, travellers were being driven off land and told to move on, but Liam just seemed to bridge that gap and found camaraderie and shared understanding. And uh, I think for that reason, he was just way ahead of his time. You know, his, his hallmark song was Dark Horse on the Wind, a sort of political ballad calling for a dark horse, some unexpected figure or revolution to rise up and affect change. You just have to listen to the lyrics, you know. 
the one-eyed Balor still reigns king in the nation of the blind. You know, so rich in imagery and mythology. And, you know, here's a man born out of pure poverty, no education, you know, very little, you know, literary training. And we, we associate this kind of writing with the academy, with the great professors of classics and literature, you know. Name was that but that. I don't know. For me, I, I think... If anyone was a, a dark horse, it, it was Liam. Rise, rise, dark horse on the wind. For the one-eyed baller still reigns in our nation of the blind. Lovely. Yeah. Where will you be, my blue-eyed son? Oh, when your daddy's race is run When your sire is song as song Where will you be, my little one? Where will you be, my black-haired son? Oh, when your daddy's time has come When no more the flesh I heed Where will you be, seed of my seed? Ginny Joe, winds will blow Carrying you onward, your seed to sow. While fading dandelion lay on the bank below. I believe songs, and I've reiterated what I've said many times before, the songs have souls. Till you capture the soul of the song, then you don't, you never sing it truly, you know. And hopefully if you capture that and it captures you, it comes across to the audience, you know. Well, those who are receptive to that, you know, who haven't been brainwashed, that every Irish song should be funny and hilarious and whatever, you know. Some songs demand that you not only listen to them, but you feel them as well, you know. I think that's, for me, that's what songs and singing is about. I am the tree, leaf, branch and root. Whose hand shall gather of my fruit For flowers must blossom To fade and die Cast seed on the wind And reason why Ginny Joe Winds will blow Carrying you onward Your seed to sow While fading dandelion Lie on the earth below 